Cloning in the Animal Industry by Bethany Bayer, Brianna Bazin, Madison Griffin, Colby Kala, Natasha Lane, Cheyenne Miller, John Telly, and Sarah Walker. Animal Science 107, Group 26. First, we're going to talk about the history and background of cloning. In regards to the history of cloning, the first successful mammal began with a sheep by the name of Dolly. She was created by a scientist by the name of Ian Wilmot, along with some of his fellow colleagues up in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1996. She was produced from the mammary gland of an adult sheep and from there helped pave the way to what we know now know cloning, uh, what we know of cloning is today. One of her most prolific contributions was sparking the interest of Shinya Yamanaka, who helped develop the first stem cells derived from adult cells. The scientific explanation of cloning. The most common cloning technique is called somatic cell nuclear transfer, where the donor's egg's nucleus is removed and replaced with the nucleus and genes of a cell from the animal that the scientists wish to duplicate. The cell is then stimulated and implanted into a surrogate mother. The slide above summarizes the process of cloning by nuclear transfer in five steps, beginning with finding a suitable nuclear donor cell and ending with the selection of fertilized cells to develop to term in a surrogate animal. The process of cloning has also allowed researchers to gain a further understanding of epigenetics. Epigenetics is the modification of DNA in a way that is non-permanent. Examples of this include methylation and acet acetylization of DNA histone proteins, which can be seen in the picture on the right. Epigenetic changes are heritable, especially between clones, and can lead to the development of disease and heat-resistant livestock. The advantages and disadvantages of cloning. There are many potential benefits of cloning, and its benefits can be utilized across scientific and animal production industries. For example, cloning is important for larger inquiry as it can be utilized to produce a larger number of genetically identical animals for research purposes. Cloning can also be used by scientists to recover the genomes of endangered animals. Finally, cloning can also be used in the animal production and show industry to multiply prize winning and top breeding animals or to produce transgenic animals with superior genes that can result in superior milk production, carcass composition, and feeding efficiency. Feeding efficiency is especially important to farmers as it affects their entire production system. If livestock are requ not required as much crops to feed, farmers can cut back on fertilizer and diesel use for crop upkeep, thus creating a smaller environmental footprint. The first image on the right slot on the slide depicts sister clones of Dolly the sheep, the first successfully cloned mammal. The bottom picture includes an example of a transgenic pig. The pig on the left has been genetically marked with a yellow fluorescent gene from a jellyfish, making its snout and toes appear a yellow color. Additional advantages of cloning include the fact that it can lead to the creation of a superior livestock breed, and the cells that are cloned can come from an unfertile donor, such as a castrated steer. In other words, the donor does not have to be fertile to make fertile offspring. Also, Cloning allows producers to maintain excellent genetics within their herd. Some advantages, some disadvantages of cloning are that it is time consuming, expensive, it has a low success rate due to it being in its preliminary research stages, and animals have more problems at birth when cloned than they do naturally. The potential drawbacks of cloning. Cloning can be extremely tedious and it can cause some slight alterations, various deformities, disabilities, or even death. And then it can also affect the fetus, in, uh, impairing development, and then causing abnormal fetal placenta and large offspring syndrome. And like we already mentioned, there's a low success rate, and then lots of costs due to it being in its initial preliminary research stages. Texas A&M is famous for its research in cloning. In fact, A&M leads the nation in the number of successful cloning projects as they have cloned six species in six years. They've cloned cattle, pigs, deer, a boar goat, a horse, and most famously, a cat named Cece. Despite their success rate of only 1-5%, to 5%, Texas A&M researchers are hopeful for the future of cloning. They believe it has the potential to transform the livestock industry. Cloning and tissue banking are very powerful tools for preserving, and 
for preserving valuable genomes. This experiment revolved around a black Angus bull that was resistant to bovine brucellosis and was approved by Texas A&M University's Institutional Animal Use and Care Committee. There was no semen collected before the bull died. Therefore, it was believed that the disease-resistant genome was lost. An ear punch was collected from the bull in 1985 and frozen in LN2 for about 15 years. Researchers took the cells from the ear skin and used somatic cell nuclear transfer in an attempt to clone the disease-resistant bull. The clone bull was also resistant to, resistant to brucellosis. Therefore, the nuclear transform did, transfer did not affect the genome responsible for the disease resistant, and the cloning was successful. Ethical and other concerns with cloning. Despite the steady improvement of cloning technology throughout the years, consumer acceptance of its use in the food production industry is not very high, and people often tend to think of cloning in a negative light. In fact, a survey conducted by the International Food Information Council found that half of Americans viewed cloning as not very favorable or not favorable at all. A similar number of consumers said they were not likely to buy meat, milk, or eggs from offspring of cloned animals, even if the products were deemed safe by the FDA. Consumers also wrestle with ethical, religious, and moral issues of cloning. The public's negative perception of cloning often comes from the idea that cloning will eventually replace the process of human production, reproduction. This argument is flawed, as the most common method of cloning, nuclear transfer, is not a sexually reproductive process. Rather, nuclear transfer only produces reconstructed cells to produce pseudo or fake embryos. Nuclear transfer is also not risk-free, so it will, be used, it will not be used on humans until a large number of clones have lived healthy lives. Negative perceptions of cloning can also be due to myths spread by popular media like documentaries and news articles. Here are the group roles for our project. And then here are some references uh, for information we've used for the project. We really appreciate your time and, and tuning into our pr uh, presentation today. I hope you enjoyed it and I um, hope you have a good, good day. Thank you.